Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode we continue our Voyager window missions. We are currently at September 13th, 1977 and we have a few more missions to go. I might need to send my resupply vessels out before finishing them off. We've got uh, 22 days on uh, Moonport 1. But it's better to have enough time to send the backup mission just in case something goes wrong with the first one. And of course we've rebuilt the missions. So you can see we've got a Moonport resupply, Moonport resupply. So if one goes wrong we can send another. And of course all the Moonport resupplies can be used for the spaceport as well. The spaceport ones cannot be used for the Moonport because that's a longer distance and we don't have the Delta V. But yeah, the first one that will uh, need more supplies is the moon port, and that's further away. So I'll have to see what kind of buffer I want there. But yeah, we're going to launch this. This is, this is actually the largest, physically largest mission that we are going to launch. This is the Exo Moon Explorer on uh, Nico 3340, I believe. And the total vessel mass you can see is 3,859 tons, and I think we've got some... Uh, boil off here. Uh, so yeah, liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen is boiling off. Let's toggle the clamp to fill that up again. Alright, uh, after this we do need to launch our Mars base, uh, which we want, we want to get off on this window. So yeah, we'll try and do that first and then we will move on to maybe resupplying, maybe getting another mission to the outer planets. We'll see. But anyway, we don't have to do any particular lining up. Uh, throttle up. SAS on and let's hope this doesn't have any problems like the uh, one of the other missions did the um, outer comm missions had an issue alright uh, this has a lot of engines uh, 33 engines at the start so let's get a fair distance so we don't blow our eardrums ignition Okay, looks good. Can't hear it yet. And it's going on. You don't get to see one of these every day. Because the timing of everything is so tight now, I decided not to wait for any sort of lineup. Oh, we lost an engine. Been a while since we've seen one of that, uh, something like that. Uh, we've been pretty good with our engine so far. Well, that's all right. This has a lot. The question is, where did it go out? That one. So we're gonna have to shut off that booster manually. Otherwise, it'll uh, it'll run too long. Are you sure nothing else is a problem? Alright, gotta get ready to handle these boosters. We can see the fuel running out. The fuel in the core doesn't last for too much longer, by the way. Okay, and set. Off they go. And visually, we can tell which boost. Oh! Well, I think we're because we're in sort of a transition situation, we can't really see, but that one is obviously the one that was uh, still partly fueled and had one engine go out. But, there we go, Sep. I don't... Oh well, let's just go with it. Yeah, dubious staging the ferry. Uh oh! Oh! This had that problem. This had the controller exploding problem. Dang it, I should have fixed that. This is a big rocket to not fix something like that, right? Uh, I think. Mechjeb can still control it. Hopefully. really need to flatten out. I think the verniers are if we wanted to restart this stage. Possibly we might want to. Let's see if we can just burn out this stage and whether that's the most efficient way to go. 
Yeah, altogether, I think burning out this stage would not be a problem. Now our apolapsis should end up out there, pointed in the right direction. Oh, right, I can't throttle. Haha. <laughs> I was gonna try and throttle down, but that's not something I can do without avionics. Well, we'll have to pitch down more then. Well, I'll have to remind myself to fix the avionics situation on this. But with all the rockets that we're launching, I wonder if I'll remember. Well, might as well ignite the verniers now. All right, let's separate that off. Okay, now we have avionics. And let's make sure we've locked uh, the upper fuels. I think we have. And so there's just transfer fuel. Um, all right. Okay, let's make sure our main dish is tuned to Earth before we forget that. Very important. Mission critical, if you will. Alright, well, I was trying to fine-tune an approach to Saturn with this, uh, but we're running out of time on the node, and weirdly, we have a Neptune encounter. Now, I don't know if this has enough Delta V to, like, capture around Triton, for instance. Uh, that would be quite novel. But we've got a Neptune encounter with this burn, though it's a very hefty burn. Much more than I wanted, and that's probably because of our really weird orbit that is neither in line with the moon nor particularly... I mean, uh, our apoapsis is pointed in the right direction, though, so I'm a little bit confused. But, uh, yeah, it's just not a very good thing, apparently. So, let's make sure the fuel is settled down, and we really need to get started with this burn, so... Throttle up and engage and before I forget let me unlock these fuels as well because we don't want to try and start those engines without that being unlocked oh so this tank here okay and then we have this tank here and this tank here both of which are still locked so we probably have a fair amount of Delta V beyond what we see here, which is already quite a lot. Is it enough to capture around Triton? Well, I mean, the point of this was to capture around a uh, moon that was difficult to capture around. One possibility was Io, which uh, takes more than Europa, Ganymede, or Callisto. And this is... Well, it's sort of configured the same way as our Ganymede landers, so it could even land at uh, a place without an atmosphere, if it can capture first. So that's an option. There's a lot of options with this. The problem is, it's an expensive mission. So, I guess uh, uh, the best thing to do is to send it out as far away as possible. Because, you know, we'll be able to get stuff to Jupiter and Saturn relatively quickly, but it takes a while to get to Neptune. So if we start off the Neptune one first, that makes sense. But I want to make sure that we can actually, like, get into orbit around, ne well, getting into orbit around Neptune is easy. Get into orbit around Triton is the tough part. But we'll check that after we do this burn. All right. Staging seems a little bit complicated here. Hold on, let me. Uh, okay. All right, so we probably want that one. And then go like that. All right. And that fuel is unlocked, so staging. And we continue. Everything was fine with the J2 stage. We will probably need to unlock this fuel. This stage doesn't have any RCS thrusters. So, just to control stuff. Since we're going to have to relight the stage and do other maneuvers. We'll need to do it that way. So, it looks like 7,000 here, and then there's probably another 2,600 up here. 
or let's just say 2,000 to be safe. Actually, we might not need to unlock this just yet. We do have a small reaction wheel up there that might be enough to turn this. Let's try that out. Oh, but it won't be enough to sell the fuel down. So basically after this burn we'll have 8,000 meters per second left. And the question is whether that's going to be enough to catch around Triton, given that by the time we're arriving at Neptune, we're, we're being flung pretty fast. Now, we're also arriving in 18 years, which is a long time. Not, not the best time, because we're missing Saturn here right now. But I'm also loath to actually get rid of this Neptune encounter and try and replot everything. But it'll depend on what ends up happening after this burn, because this burn is definitely not going to be in line with the plot anyway. Okay, shut down. And let's see what this has brought us to. Well, nothing anywhere like what we were supposed to be doing. Let's see, we do have an encounter with Jupiter, that's fine. Alright, I have a correction of 144.7 meters per second, and this is Neptune here. And we've sort of got a worst case scenario uh, coming out here because, uh, and ob obviously it'd be better to get closer to Neptune, but I can't, it's too sensitive right now. Uh, we would have to do that on a mid-course adjustment. Right now this is inside Earth SOI. So we'll have to plot something else to get closer to Neptune than this. But uh, given this worst case scenario kind of thing, uh, we've got a burn of 5,617 to get into an elongated orbit like that. And then a burn of uh, 795 to match orbits with Triton. And after that, uh, we've even got a little close approach there. It'll probably take just a little bit more to adjust our orbit to Titans considering how close it is already. Uh, remember, getting into orbit around something is just matching its orbit, so that shouldn't be too hard. So we're talking about, uh, well, I'll call it uh, 5,700 plus uh, 800, so 6,500, which with the fuel we've already got locked should be absolutely doable. So it's looking like this can land, not land, but at least get into orbit around Triton. Land could be possible. We'll have to judge that after we get a little bit closer to Neptune. And uh, I'm just gonna do it my usual way. I know uh, there was a suggestion to get close. As usual, I, I swear I've demonstrated this before, that uh, getting close and doing the triple burn way, which is uh, first capture into orbit, then at apoapsis burn up to the orbit of the of the moon and then at periapsis drop the orbit um, and I understand why people think that that might save some and it's because of the Oberth effect we have a bit of a problem don't we yeah okay I think uh, we, we don't want to crash into Jupiter alright I'll take that 30,000 kilometers at Jupiter and let's say we do a burn right at Jupiter periapsis, so we don't want to do any inclination thing. But if it's just prograde retrograde, we can do it there. Let's see if we can get something at Neptune like that. Okay, so here we have a sort of tangency to Triton, and let's see how much it'll take to... Um, but it's 24 years now, and we're making the maneuver node after Jupiter to avoid crashing into Jupiter. I think it'd be a lot faster if I was able to plot some sort of encounter with Saturn and have it accelerate us, but maybe we'll just wait on this one. Uh, boy, it'll take a while though. We're talking about arrival at 2001. Well, I mean, you know, if we manage to launch something else at Triton in the interim, that'd be great, but uh, it's not like we're going to be flinging too many things out there. So, yeah. Not the best sort of situation, but we'll take it for now. And yeah, let me just see. So this correction will take 769, as you can see. And we're going to try and make orbits around Triton, which is matching orbits with Triton. And actually, there's an encounter, too. Um, so this is going to cost, oh, tiny bit, 2,936. Look at that. Well, that's excellent. And if we zoom in at Triton, yeah, not not that. I want a focus view. 
let's see how much additional we need to actually make the capture. Hold on, let's uh, get closer. Okay, well, it's not liking, see, it's not liking doing all these maneuvers. But no, it's pretty, pretty obvious it's not actually doing the capture burn at all. Well, we're talking about on the order of 3,000, 3,100 to do it like that. Now, if we got closer to Neptune, we're going to say, let's say 16,000 kilometers. That should be good enough. Try to get in line. And we capture. Okay, that's a loose capture, and that costs about 500. Boost up. That costs 300, uh, let's say 250. So 750. And pull down. Uh, <laughs> you can see why I don't like this too much, but. Um, uh, Hold on, let's go back up again and pull it back down. Okay, that, that, that's good enough. Well, it does cost less. So I was wrong. Well, uh, let's go with this then. Let's assume that this is our sequence. And I wonder if I could get to plot another one. So, uh, apologies to Winged. It looks like this is correct. And But it does take a little bit longer to get there. Now. Oh, well, no, we're just not going to be able to plot that at all. Okay, well, and now this is all messed up too. Let's, let's do all the details once we get there. But fine, we'll uh, try and get close to Neptune here and capture like this. But our first priority is this maneuver and that will be in a while and we will arrive in quite a long time. Fortunately we'll have an ambassador mission swinging by much earlier to fulfill the flyby contract. Maybe we should get that mission in orbit first so that it can provide communication support. Okay, so this is on its way, and it definitely has enough fuel to fulfill all these maneuvers and more. It might have been wise to send it to something that uh, send it to some place with a lot of different moons. I haven't added the RSS um, extended pack, which would allow, uh, which would put more moons around Neptune. That would have been a good idea, but I'm still a little bit iffy on whether that's safe or not. Okay, so we've got the alarm there. Let's go on to our next mission. All right, here we are now with Mars Base 1. And this is a rocket half the size of the one we just launched. So hopefully not quite so loud. But in any case, a significant launch. Probably our first attempt at a Mars base is not going to work. But uh, we have to try at some point and this is a good uh, window to do that. So, SAS on, throttle is up, and ignition. And launch. Okay, we are off. So, uh, I was completely wrong about the way I was going about planetary captures previously. Uh, Winged was the one who brought it up most recently, but I'm sure other people have told me to go closer to like Jupiter in order to capture before and do the three-step capture. Um, I must have misremembered whether I had tried that out or not. I, I probably did, but for some reason I thought I hadn't I had concluded that it wasn't a big difference, 
it might have been that just plotting out the maneuvers ahead of time led to inaccurate results or something like that, but anyway. Uh, definitely seems like getting closer to the planet helps, at least our plot with Neptune seemed that way. Okay, not too fast. Generally giving me advice works this way, in other words, I will basically challenge- I get a lot of tips, and I sort of have to figure out who's re who really knows what they're talking about, and who just watched a YouTube video and is repeating what they saw there. And as somebody who makes YouTube videos, I'm, I'm a little bit suspicious about people who just watched a YouTube video and got what their information they got from that. So, so yeah, uh, expect if you give me a tip, I will sort of have a questioning tone, but I will still keep it in mind, if I don't forget. Sometimes I forget. Obviously, in this case, um, it seems like I've forgotten some things along the way. Fortunately, I think nobody bothers to cite me as a source or considers me an authority on anything, so that's good, because you probably shouldn't. But I, I don't give off an air of being authoritative. I give off an air of being derpy, so... This is because I include all my failures, and... Nobody can mistake me for an expert. Ignition? And booster separation. Alright. Looking good so far. Well, let's try the fairings. Wait, we are getting into space. There we go. Fairings. Wow, wow, that's close. Yeah, that could have gone badly. All right, separation and ignition. And our J2 is ignited. So, just need to finish off orbit here. Our main dish is tuned. You can see our sort of package here. The crew cabin there uh, can only support two Kerbals. Most of this stuff is food, water, and oxygen for the stay. And then these are the landing engines. Obviously, we would have to dump this heat shield before trying to use those. Right now, the controller for all this is actually up here, the Delta Avionics Unit. And to feed that with enough power, we've got large solar arrays. Okay shut down 220 by 206 and let's plot for Mars we have 4500 in this stage and we have to you know use it up we're not gonna be having it tag along so uh, we should be alright um, alright well it's very stable so alright how much fuel do we use up here A little bit there. Now this is 1.1.3 so you don't have to stage the RCS thrusters. So I wonder why they weren't firing. Oh that's Aerozine and this is MMH so we can't really fill that up. Well that's not good. And that's a shut... Uh, come on. Shut down, shut down. Alright. Um, let's try and do... Well, I don't know. It's not got 
the right RCS sort of situation here. Let me see. Why have the RCS thrusters not been firing? They seem to be configured to MMHN 204 based on their ISP. RCS is enabled. Oh, the game is a little bit stuck because it's quick saving. I'm pushing H. But uh, these thrusters aren't firing. So we should probably dump this bit in order to make any adjustments. I mean, I could try staging the RCS thrusters, I suppose. That has not helped. Okay, well, I don't know what's up with them. Maybe the tanks aren't pressurized? I'm, that, that's not usually a problem. But anyway, we need to do what we need to do. Yeah, we're probably going to need some sort of adjustment. Yeah, yeah, they're just getting worse there. We have about 570 meters per second of correction fuel here in this bit. Though we might have to use that to refuel these pods. They're, wow, they're really uh, lacking now, but we need them for landing fuel. The RCS thrusters I've been using a lot, it seems. You might want to tune these down. But then again, they have to control the craft while landing, so... Not entirely sure it's a good idea to have them thrust limited. We'll need to do some correction once we get into Mars SOI, let me see. But we are actually going straight down, I think. We could try and capture using the heat shield first. We'll decide once we get there. We don't have many heat shield trials to see how exactly to capture something like this. Generally, it's about 50 kilometer altitude to make a capture. Okay, that should do the trick. So we'll add that maneuver as an alarm. And in 375 days, we will be approaching Mars. Everything seems set. And we are good on power. We are recharging. We've got huge solar panels. All right, so that mission is done. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, I've decided to proceed with a Moonport resupply mission, and we're down to 17 days there. I think it's about time to get it done, even though we still have uh, some missions to the outer planets, as well as... I, I don't think we have any more for Mars, actually. Let me take a quick look. Uh, we've got an ambassador mission and a MAPSAT 2A for the outer planets. Uh, otherwise, we would be proceeding with uh, resupply missions and then also uh, crew rotation missions. And then after that, we are going to go to the next phase, which is possibly building up our stations, as uh, adding research modules, and also trying to build a base on the moon. I think it's about time for that. But for now, uh, let's get this done. So we are reasonably lined up with the moon. I think I think we can correct that amount of inclination from here. So SAS on actually. Thrall is up and ignition. And launch. It's at least nice that these missions are fairly consistent. Obviously we could probably do something to optimize them a little bit more, but I like it that we can rely on them. Okay, booster set. Okay, separation. Separation and ignition. And now let's get rid of the fairings. Okay. Everything seems to be in order. We have plenty of time to get to orbit. 
okay, I at some point misread the vertical speed and thought it was negative when it was actually positive, so we ended up a little lopsided. But okay, anyway, we should be still good to go. Let me plot for the moon. Actually, let me just do that real quickly. It shouldn't be too hard. Okay, we have our plot, and this burn shouldn't take very long because we're just using up the remainder of this fuel, which is not much of a tank. Um, let's hit node, but I think, oh well, we do have to sell the fuel down, so no option there. And ignition. Bit of a pause. Okay, we are off. That's not reading correct. That's fine. We probably will finish up this stage just shy of finishing the maneuver. And we'll have to use some of that fuel in order to finish it. But that's what we do every time. Okay. Uh, separ yep, separation. And ignore. Okay. Okay, well, it's gonna cause trouble for me as far as seeing what's really going on here. Uh, we seem to be 15 degrees off, which is not great, but we'll we'll make do. It'll be fine, and we'll probably try and capture right there and correct some of that. Oh, oh wait, now it's showing something different. Great. Okay, I'll figure it out in Lunar SOI where I can see things a little bit better. Let's head on over there. Okay, I think it's time to capture here. Capture burn initiated. Alright, let's see what docking ports are available. We should probably let go of some of these. Uh, well, it's adjusting the food, water, and oxygen in them right now, catching up to where we're actually at. So we'll give it some time to do that. I guess we can use this Apollo docking system port here. It's either that or the one over here, which is also an Apollo docking system port. But that's that's probably okay right there. And I guess to finish things off, we can empty at least one of these other ones and try and smash it into the surface of the moon. I suppose the next thing would be to give these guys heat shields and parachutes and try and bring them back. But there's not actually that much value beyond the actual supplies. And they'd need to reserve... Well, I mean, it's clear that they can have 800 meters per second of delta V. That's not a big problem. Since it's supposed to be measuring from the docking port, it's weird that it's so inaccurate. But anyway, we are docked. And let's see, which one... Well, first of all, how much... Okay, we've got more than 180 days. That's great for our current three crew members. And... So it's possible that we could just arrange to bring back half of these back instead of all of them. And the spare fuel in one will help the other get back kind of thing. And then the, the ones that can't make it back will crash into the moon. But okay, this is empty now. Oh, you're down here. They all look alike, so it's tough to tell which one I'm controlling from. 800 meters per second. After we drained all that fuel, that is 800 meters per second. Actually, that, it occurs to me it's much easier to bring them back than I thought. Because I was taking a look at the Delta V when it's got the food, water, and oxygen in. Without the food, water, and oxygen, it's much lighter. Yeah, maybe we should try and figure out how to make these reusable. And But then it'll be more difficult to make them docking port agnostic. You know, we've got the propellant only one on the front and Apollo docking system in the back. We probably won't be able to do that if we want to, to slap a heat shield on this. Anyway, retrograde please. And break. <laughs> Uh, 
But for now, there's no way this would survive re-entry at Earth, so we'll just dispose of it here. And probably we'll create some sort of seismic thing for our seismic de detector here. If I, I think there is one on the surface, right? That's that's this series, unless it's another series. Nah, it's so hard to sort these things out sometimes. Okay, so this is without any time warp, skimming across the surface at nearly 1700 meters per second. And will it be this hill? Uh, nope, not that hill. Next ridge? Nope, not the next ridge. Uh, I think it's gonna be right here. And the game's preparing already. Impact recorded. Okay, so it is this one. Science report can now be accessed. All right. Well, we'll do that some other time. Uh, with that explosion, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.